I teach rural and urban permaculture. Um, I also do gift economy. Um, so most of what I do, I don't have a price. It's not a product, it's not a service. Everything I do is priceless. Right? And we're all priceless. So I want to live in a world where everything is priceless. And not like Sanzayan to like Chimayan to and sometimes I meditate in Shibuya streets. <laughs> this is Shibuya Kota, the intersection. So I teach mindfulness too. Um, and uh, one big project I want, I'm doing right now is uh, the Peace and Permaculture Dojo. And to just create a, a different reality where we practice peace, we live ecologically, we see what's beautiful about Japan and we also bring in other elements from outside of the world. So. These are the things we're going to do, so you're all welcome to come join me. This is happening now. Um, and so one of the things I uh, teach is nonviolent communication. How many of you know nonviolent communication? You voted communication, which is Cool. So um, sometimes I call it kyokan communication, empathetic uh, communication. Um, and Marshall Rosenberg started it, but he says, when we understand the needs that motivate our own and others' behaviors, we have no enemies. So when we understand other people, they're no longer our enemy. You know, like sometimes your girlfriend or your wife or your husband is your enemy or your mom or your colleagues. So it's because we don't understand why they're doing that. And then we start thinking they're trying to torture us. They're making us miserable. So this is revolutionary, I think. And in Japanese, we have the word muteki. But that's like, and um, the, one of the goals is a paradigm shift. So working from fear paradigm to love paradigm. So think about how many decisions you make in your life based on fear. Like, do you choose your job because you really love it? Or do you choose it because you're afraid you're not going to have enough money? Or you're not good enough to get a better job? or live without money, or just do what you want to do, or, you know, any number of things. Just start to check, like, when do you live out of fear, and when do you live out of, like, I really want to do this, and that's why I'm doing it. This is a, this is a fundamental shift. Our whole economy, our political system, our educational system is based on fear. Whether your mom is going to scold you or not, whether the teacher is going to think you're good or bad, whether your boss is going to think you're good or bad. So we always motivate each other through fear, and we create a world of fear. And one of the big changes that I want to make is we, we have a power over or under relationship, so we're always trying to create hierarchy, joge kanke. But what I want to create is power with. Everybody is equal. Everybody is equally important as a life. The kids, you, the president, we're all equal in terms of value. Right? And that's the world I want to create, and I think a lot of you would love to see that world, but maybe you can't believe it yet. Um, so, what is empathy? Um, so, my, the way I explain empathy is it's not something we do in the head. It's something we do in the heart. So it's a connection from the heart to the heart. Um, and unfortunately, our culture, we're not very good at that. So we always think who's right, who's wrong, um, who's better, who's worse. But we don't, we don't go beyond that often and just be like, what is that person feeling? And why are they feeling that? and just being curious about that person's human experience. So that's the empathy. But to be able to empathize, first we need to be able to self-empathize and connect with ourselves. Because sometimes we don't know why we're angry. We don't know why we're happy. We don't know why we're crying. We're so disconnected from ourselves. So self-empathy is about embracing your feelings and what's behind the feelings. What are you needing? 
and this takes time, and this takes space. And it's not a, it's not a process you can think about. It's more like feeling. Um, so it's connecting to the feelings and the needs. And I think you can all relate to this. We are our greatest enemies. You probably would be doing much more greater things if you yourself weren't stopping you, right? And so our insecurities, our fears, we're not good enough. I can't do that. And our childhood traumas, things we have difficulties in our childhood that keep us from moving forward, prevent us from fully being in our power. I think all of us could do much greater things if we had peace in ourselves. But these things hold us back and we don't have time to connect. Um, and this is what's happening in our heads. You know? Like, you should know more English. You took all those classes and why don't you know English? <laughs> right? And so it's happening in our heads. And then our minds are so focused on that that we're not here, fully present. Um, so, for instance, like, I'll just, I'll just demonstrate it really quickly. So I feel nervous right now. And I can feel my heart pounding quite quickly. And so first is just connecting to your body sensation. What's going on in your body right now? And so I'm feeling nervous. And the nervousness is a little bit, like a little bit scared, a little bit not quite fully here. So that's the feeling. And behind the feeling, like why am I feeling that way? I'm feeling that way because I want to be accepted by you. I want you to uh, think that, you know, like I'm, I'm doing something important and that I, I, I just want to matter, you know. I want to know that I'm safe here. And, um, and I'm not quite... I have some criticism about myself. Like, oh, your presentation is not that good. Oh, look, that person's yawning. So I'm constantly <laughs> criticizing myself. I'm doing this to myself. And so I can't feel quite fully present here. And so that's, that's the process of self-empathy. It's just connecting with what is. And it's not so much trying to change it. It's just embracing wherever I'm at. And if I can be happy with my fears, if I'm really angry and I can just hug myself and be like, yeah, you are angry. Or if I'm crying and I can just hold myself and be like, yeah, it's sad, you're really sad, and I'm here for you. Then no longer am I in internal conflict, I'm my own friend. And this is really important for leaders because often leaders become isolated. How many of you, empathize with uh, Abe Shinzo or Donald Trump, <laughs> right? How many of you actually think about what is his life like? Is he a happy person? Is he struggling? So my teachers often say empathy never goes up. So as a leader, it's easy to feel lonely. If you're a boss, I think you know what it's like. And you can't share your feelings because you have to look strong. And that creates a lot of tension and actually prevents us from really creating a different world. So I, I do a lot of uh, work with people, but I try to be as honest and authentic, as possible. And that creates a heart connection. That creates power with, not power over. Um, and this is uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, a Zen master, and he says, real strength can be found not in power, money, or weapons, but in deep inner peace. So it's fine to be scared. It's fine to be angry. There's lots of things to be angry about. There's lots of things to be sad about. But the issue is whether you can have peace with yourself when you're angry. Whether you can love yourself when you're scared sad. And one more thing he said was, without peace and happiness, we cannot take care of ourselves, other species, and our planet. So we have lots of angry people trying to fight for the environment, 
but then everybody goes away because they don't want to be around angry people. And um, he says the best way to care for the environment is to care for the environmentalist. <clears throat> so for anything, it's always important if you really want to help somebody or if you really want to make the planet a better place, the first step is to connect with yourself and care for yourself. And if you're happy, if you're peaceful, then that's what you're going to spread is happiness and peace. But if you're angry, you're likely to spread that anger, even if it's for a good cause. And um, Gandhi said, my life is my message. And I think this is really powerful. A lot of people follow Gandhi, but they follow Gandhi because he really practiced to be peace. He really practiced to be love. He had no enemy. And it was his, ex it was his being that really drew people to him. And I think you know people who just seeing them, you feel drawn. Like there's something about them that has so much power and you're like, I want to be like that. Or I want to know that person. And so for me, it's always about being and not so much what you do. Because lots of us do lots of things. But if we look back at the couple of years that we've been working hard, it's like, what did we really do that changes the world? You know, we get busy. And so it's really about being, and being is about connecting to yourself and creating inner peace. Um, so, that's really briefly what I do, and I actually work in Japan, so if you want, we can work together. But self-empathy is really important, and oftentimes we forget. Because there's so many issues outside, so we're always trying to put out the fire, but the fire inside is still burning, and it'll drain you, and eventually <coughs> you won't last, and you'll uh, burn out. Moetsuki Shokogun. So this is kind of like really important, and I think our the Japanese Zen culture taught that, but we've forgotten that that's important. Um, so, one last slide. Um, one of my favorite words is moved by love. This is uh, Gandhi's counterpart, Vinoba Bhave, who was an amazing activist. He said, this is what moves him, love. And I think if we all move by love, not by fear, we would create an amazing world. So, um, my invitation is to think about what would happen if you were really moved by love? And how do you get there? Um, and um, this is my information, so if you want to contact me, then you're welcome. And I also have a book, so it's in Japanese, so if you're interested, I write some of these things in there. Um, and then I also have the Peace and Permaculture Dojo. Permaculture the Heiwa Dojo. Crowdfunding right here today. So anyways, thank you for listening. Um, and I hope we can keep this conversation going. Thank you. Uh, Kai was talking about uh, being the present moment and connecting with ourselves. So we wanted to invite you again to take one minute of reflection to connecting with yourself, everybody that you heard today, and to think if you have any kind of if you have any questions to make for us, we have like a couple of minutes for questions and answers. So connect to yourself and check if you want to ask any of us something, okay? Just one minute of breathing and connecting.
yourselves. Does anybody have any questions for any of us? Or would like to make any kind of comment or to share some experience or something like this? question to you and you mentioned that you can exercise the to how to emphasize you know with myself but, but do you have any like, specific ways to exercise empathy? Yeah there are actually um, a lot of different ways uh, I'm going to try to share with you a couple of them so what uh, maybe the first exercise um, about empathy, it's to try to change your look, the way you look to people, you know. Um, sometimes, uh, I said something about it, like you look people like they are our enemies and they are trying to hurt us or something like this. And I think the first empathy exercise is to try to understand that everybody has a context, has a story.